Okay, welcome to the learning target number five video. Okay, I can simplify algebraic expressions by combining like terms. So this is this is exactly what I told you about in the last video. You, whereas, well, let me say this: last ch video, you guys had to identify the like terms, but I think on a couple of the questions, I was able to kind of show you what combining like terms means. So go ahead and flip in your notes to page can find it. Okay. Yes, right here. Page number 12. Page number 12. Okay. Okay. Let's just look at these first two here. These are very easy. Okay. Very, very easy. Okay. Now, again, my copy didn't come out great, but I think yours is fine. Okay. Now, notice these are all pluses in here. Okay. And now the way I'm going to have you, the way I'm going to teach this is I, I would advise you all to go get highlighters. Okay? Um, there is one other way I can teach you without highlighters, but I would want you to bring them from now on when we're doing this, okay? And you'll see why here in a minute. Okay? Maybe you figured it out on the last video how I was using my colors. Okay? But the first thing I always do when I look at an expression, and again, this is an algebraic expression. Okay? Okay, this is this is an algebraic expression. And basically, I want to give a name. I want to look at all the variables I have. And I see just x's, so I like to just give it a name. So maybe I call those basketballs. Okay? X. My x represents the basketballs that I have. Okay? So I look at this and I say, okay, do I have anything in common here? Is there anything like x? We're talking like terms. Now, if, well, actually, before we do that, let's first of all go through and let's name the terms. Let's name the coefficients. Let's name the constants, and then we'll name the like terms. Because that's essentially what you're doing. Okay, not essentially, that is exactly what you're doing. Okay, so let's go through and name the terms. Okay, remember, just divide it like this. You're essentially just, just writing whatever's in between each operation. So the terms here are x, 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 and x, right? Coefficients. Okay, remember, if there isn't a coefficient listed, that just means that there's a 1, imaginary 1 there in front of all these. So I see a 1 in front of every one of those. So my coefficients are 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. Um, constants, none. There aren't any constants there. If there was a plus 7 on there, then it would be a constant, but there's not. Okay? Now let's go identify like terms. I see all these terms here. I look at my terms and I say, okay, are there any that are like each other? Well, Hopefully you're all saying all of them are like each other. They're all exactly alike. And this is how I'd want you, this is why I said something about bringing highlighters. Because I like you to go through and I like you to just kind of pick out your like terms, okay? Or highlight them. So I start with X and I say, okay, is there anything like X? Well, sure. X is like X. So obviously all these are like each other, okay? Then we basically are going to, we know we're going to simplify this down. We are going to do something called combining like terms. So my, my, my uh, like terms are x, 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 and x. And we're going to take those and we're going to combine them. Okay? We're going to combine them. Now when I use the word combine, that means add. Add. Okay? Adding is combining. If I had four apples and nine grapes and I combined them, I'd have 13 total pieces of fruit. Four plus nine. Okay? So what this is going to be is you're going to count up how many X's you have, or basketballs. I guess that's what I said they were. How many basketballs you have? You have one, two, three, four, five. So you have five X. Just like that. That's all you did. We took all this thing right here, and we combined it into being um, five X. Okay? Okay? Now we have this expression. It wants us to name the coefficient. That's what it says here in the directions. State the coefficient. The coefficient is clearly five. Very, very review, I think, from last chapter, or from last learning target. Let's go to number two. Let's first of all identify any like terms that we might see here. Okay? I see a y. Okay? So I know anything like this, 10y, 5y, y, would all be like each other. Anything with a number followed by the variable. Okay? Now, would we accept this? Would that be like that first y? Absolutely not. Okay, so I know that y and y here are alike, whereas 6 is kind of by itself. It's just it's a constant, and there are no other constants. Okay, so we're going to combine. 
are like terms here. This is why highlighters are very important. I'm, I always highlight my like terms together, and you'll see when we get done to this one how this is going to be much easier. Okay, so if I have Y, we can make it stand for whatever we want. Um, trophies. If Y represents trophies, I have one trophy, I am adding it to another trophy. I now have two trophies, and I'm going to add six constants to that. And that's all we can do. You can't go any further with this. Okay, it says uh, identify the coefficient. The coefficient then would be 2. Okay, let's identify constant terms. I see an m, I see an m, I see an m, and then I see constants, 5 and 4. Those are like each other. Now let's simplify this down and combine like terms. So I have 1m, let's say monkey, plus another monkey, plus another monkey. I now have three monkeys. Okay, and then I take my constants, and you can also combine those, 5 plus 4. Remember, combine means add, plus 9. 3m plus 9, that's how it is simplified. Okay, let's go on to this one. Let's look for common terms. Maybe n stands for, uh, Nike, no, what do I want to say? Uh, I don't want to say nerds. Well, I'll just go with nerds. Nerd sounds good. I have one nerd. I'm adding it to another nerd. I'm adding it to another nerd, another nerd, and another nerd. Those are all like each other. Now remember, if n equals nerds, then n squared cannot equal nerds. It's true. It's a totally different thing. So this would have to be, uh, I got nothing for n for some reason. I can't think. Anyway, you get the picture, I think. You can't combine those. But since those all have a degree of 1, which just means an exponent of 1, then you would leave those all would be able to be combined. So I have one nerd, two nerds, three nerds, four nerds, five nerds, and six nerds. Okay, And then I have my two constants. Remember, constants can always be combined. So I'm going to do the problem 12 minus 8, which is going to be 4. Okay, You can see where this is going to come into geometry. Very important here. A square has side lengths of x centimeters. Remember, all sides are the same, so that means x, x, and x. Okay. Find the perimeter of the square in terms of x. What that means is, how you would do it is you would do x plus x plus x. That's not a very good plus. Okay. And then now you're going to combine like terms. So all these are like each other. All the x's are just like each other. So that means all together, you take all your sides, side 1, side 2, side 3, side 4. You have four of those. So your answer would be 4x. That's what I'm looking for. I would not accept this because it's not in simplest form. Okay. Same deal here. The figure shows a trapezoid. The length of each side is given. Okay. So you have w, 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 w. That worked out well. Plus 10. So you would write it w plus w plus w plus 10. We're going to be looking for like terms. I see like w's. And then I see that 10 is all by itself. Okay, How many W's do I have here? I have three of them. And I'd be adding on my 10. That's how you do it. You do 3 times W because 1, 2, 3. Remember, uh, multiplication is just repeated addition. And then you'd add on your 10. Okay, A little bit of bar modeling. This is what I'm showing. This is what I've been showing you. You can add like terms. This is kind of why. Because you have 3x. All x are the same, so you can add it on to make it 4x. Because it's technically 3x actually equals x plus x plus x. And then you could add on the fourth one. Okay? But I don't like to think of it with these models. I personally would just rather think about it like given x a label. Okay? I have 3x's here. I have 1x there. I have a total of 4x. 4 times x. Okay? Same deal here. I have 4z's. There they are. I'm adding it to two z's. So now I have six z's. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, they're like terms. They're just z's. Maybe you say zebras. That's fine. I have four zebras. I'm adding it to two, two zebras. I'm going to put them into one cage. Now I have six zebras, which just means six times whatever z is. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, you can also subtract like terms. Same deal. I have two v's. I'm going to subtract 1v. Remember, if there's no coefficient, it's a 1. That's going to leave me with just v. Or 
obviously 1v. Okay. We usually don't put the 1 in front of the, the v like that. We leave it as just v. Here we have 5. I don't know. Let's go with walruses. And we're subtracting 3 walruses. That leaves us with 2 walruses. You can see what they're doing here. They're giving you the whole amount. They're trying to subtract out 3 of them. You can see where it leaves us with 2. They're just showing you the model. Okay. C. You're doing y minus y. Well, that equals 0. It doesn't matter what y is. It could be 8, 7, 4, 12, doesn't matter, negative 8. It doesn't matter. A variable minus itself is always 0. Okay? And that's what it says right there. Any term that is subtracted from itself is always equal to 0. Okay? I'd like you guys to do number 8, 9, and 16, please. Pause and do those. Okay? Here we go. We have 3r plus 2r. I know that those are like terms, so therefore I can combine them. I can put them together. So let's say R stood for raindrops. Real creative, I know. I have three raindrops. I can go ahead and add it together with the two raindrops. So now I have five raindrops. Over here, I have five yo-yos. I'm going to add it to six yo-yos. I'm going to put them together. Now I have 11 yo-yos. Okay, subtraction. I'm having four staples, and I'm subtracting or taking away one staple. It's going to leave me with how many? Three staples. This model should help you see what's going on. Let's go to the next page. Now, obviously, these are going to get much more difficult. Okay? You can see here, you can do multiple times. I've already showed you this, okay, but I'll show you again. I have an X. I have a 6x and I have a 2x. Those all can be combined together. So let's say x stood for people. Okay, I have one people, or one person, I mean. I have six people, I have two people. Since they're all the same variable and the same exponent, which is one, I know that I can go ahead and put all those people together. So one person plus six people plus two people give me nine people. Same deal with subtraction. I have seven people. I can take away five people and then take away another person. That leaves me with just one person. Seven minus five would be two x. Two x minus one x would be just one x or just x. Okay. Again, on these, you always work just left to right, just like you see it. Nine minus three, you're, you have nine x. You're taking away three x. That's going to give you six x. Now you're going to add on two x. That's how we get eight x. Okay. Okay, we can combine these, even if it says order, order of operations, you always do PEMDAS, right? But once again, you can do it this way the same way. In here, J's, let's call them jump ropes. I have one jump rope, I'm adding it to three jump ropes. That gives me four jump ropes. Plus, still, I can add on to these jump ropes. That gives me, I guess that's what this line was for, gives me a total of six jump ropes. Okay, I have nine... No, I don't get anything for T. Sorry. Can't think of anything. Timers. Nine timers. I'm taking away three timers. It's going to give me six timers. Now I'm going to take away four timers. It gives me two timers. You guys go ahead and try number 25 on your own real quick. Make sure you go left to right. Okay. I have eight whales. I'm subtracting six whales. They're like terms. That's going to give me two whales. Now I'm going to add on my three whales. I have a total of five whales. It's just combining like terms, guys. It's just putting them in simplest form, that's all. Combining like terms. Okay? I love this question right here. This is awesome because a lot of you would mess this up. So let's just let's talk about it because I know what the mistake would be. I'll show you right now. R plus 8 plus R plus 8. That's how you'd find the perimeter of that. R plus 8 plus R plus 8. That's how you'd all find the perimeter. You've got to know this property right here. The commutative property of addition states that two numbers can be added in any order. So it's the reason that 3 plus 4 is the exact same thing as 4 plus 3. They're the same thing. So since this is all addition right here, guys, if I can erase that without erasing, okay, this is all addition, 
You can arrange this in any order you want to. You could raise a plus r plus r plus 8, r plus 8 plus 8 plus r. It doesn't matter how you want to write this. It doesn't matter. Okay? The key is that you could put them with next to their like terms. So you could write it r plus r plus 8 plus 8 if you wanted to. So now it's easy to identify the like terms. I see that r is a term, and it's like that r. I can see that constants are always like each other. So now I can combine like terms as they did here. They took their two r's, they did 1 plus 1, they got 2r. They took their two constants and got 16. Now they know the perimeter of the parallelogram is 2r plus 16, which doesn't mean anything to you guys. I know that right now. But let me just show you where we're going. It's weird to think of that being the perimeter. But when we get into our equations, what it's going to be is it's actually going to say, okay, what if the perimeter was 24? Then what is r? That's where solving equations comes in, but that's not this chapter. So go to the next page. Okay, bunch of practice on this one. Bunch of practice. Okay? I mean, the ones I did on the previous thing were a lot more difficult than these. Okay? Let's go through and just start identifying like terms. Okay? I see an x. I see another x. Okay? I see this constant. It's going to be left alone. Okay? I'm going to combine them. 4x's plus 3x's is going to give me 7x. And then I make sure I put that minus back there. Okay? All right, this one here, I know that that's 5y's. Whenever you're identifying like terms, by the way, you need to make sure you're doing this. Always identify the sign in front of it, okay? I haven't been doing that because we didn't really worry about negatives, but you guys need to make sure you're putting signs in front, okay? So I have 5, let's just say y stands for yo-yos, okay? So I can combine those. I have my five yo-yos, and I'm taking away two yo-yos. It's going to leave me with three yo-yos. Now, the reason that's not seven is because that is a minus 2y. Okay? And then you just put down your constant as plus 4. You guys go ahead and try number 30 and number 31, and then I'll go over them. Okay? Here we go. Here is my, I have an 8y, and I have a negative 4y, or taking away 4y. This right here is a constant. It doesn't have anything to go with it. But you always look to this and say, okay, what's it doing? 8y, you got to take away your 4y. And the reason that is is because that's technically negative 4y. 8 and negative 4 put together would give you just simply 4y. And then you got to bring down minus 7. Okay? Hopefully you all got that right. Here, let's go through and identify com or common or like terms, I mean. Okay, I see a z. I see another z. And then I see two constants, positive 9, negative 2. In yellow, I'm going to do the problem that I see in yellow. That's 7 zebras, and I'm subtracting 2 zebras to give me 5 zebras. And then I see my constants here. That's 9 constants minus 2 constants gives me 7 constants. Okay? Let me go down to 34. I know I skipped the ones above it. That's okay. Okay, let's look for let's look for any more constants here that I could use. Sure, right there. Okay. Then I see a g. Notice how I'm highlighting the plus and the minus. Those are also like. So I look at what's in red and I say, okay, what would I get if I had 12 minus 5? I would have 7. What if I have if I have 6 minus 4 g's? It's going to give me plus 2 g. Okay. And the reason that's plus is because 6 minus 4 is positive 2. Okay? Here, let's go through, same deal. It's a constant. It's a constant. It's a constant. That's not a constant. That's a, that's a term, and that's a term, the R. 27 minus 9 would give me 18. 3R plus 15R would give me positive 18R. Okay? Let's go down here and see. Exactly. I'm going to skip this for now. Let's see what this person did wrong. Rita simplified the expression 10w minus 5w plus 2w in this way. Let's see what she did wrong. Well, I can see right away that what did she do? She did 5w 
and 2W combined those first, didn't she? Did See where she got 7W? She combined that first. Guys, you have to understand. You always have to follow this. It doesn't matter whether you're combining like terms or whatever. Okay? Because you have to do from left to right. You have to do your combining left to right because subtraction or addition. Okay? So the way Rita should have done it is she should have done this first. Combine 10W and then take away your 5W to give you 5W. And then add on your 2W. There's where 7W come from. Okay? So she did hers wrong because she did this step first. Okay? Okay, that's the end of the learning target number five video.